When you think, though, about the last year and you think about your approach, what is the lesson in it? Meaning, I know you have a North Star about specifically these, these stocks that you're talking about, but at some level, you have to look around, and I think your investors would want you to look around and say, okay, I was wrong. What was I wrong about? And if I was wrong, how am I going to change my approach in the future? So uh, if uh, uh, we were wrong on one, uh, one thing, and that was inflation uh, being as sustained as it has been, supply chain, I can't believe it's taken more than two years, and uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, of course, we couldn't have seen that. So inflation has been a bigger problem, but I think uh, that it has set us up for deflation. Uh, I, I've been listening to your program. I heard Ken Langone talk about being in recession now, Jeremy Siegel saying, we think we're in a recession, and we think a really big problem out there is inventories, the likes of the, the increase uh, of which I've never seen this large in my career. And I've been around for 45 years. Uh, and we're talking about the best managed companies in the world. If you're talking about Walmart and Target, they know how to manage supply chains. So if they have problems, we think there are a lot more problems. And then the other thing that's going on is the consumer is railing against these price increases. Consumer sentiment, as measured by the University of Michigan, which we think is the best measure out there, uh, is down to record low levels, below 0809, below 80 and 81. I had just started my career and inflation and interest rates were in the double digits, 15, 20%. And consumer sentiment today is lower than it was back then. And most interestingly, in the last report, many people think, oh, the, 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 the heavy spenders will, will uh, keep this thing going. Consumer sentiment of the, in the highest income groups is lower than in the the lowest income groups, and those the latter group is being you know it, it tormented by food and energy prices, which are really a regressive tax increase here to them. I say that this was a very transparent interview into the mind of Kathy Woods. She did get pressed on the question of what were you wrong about because we have heard Kathy Woods so many times say that in her five-year horizon, 10-year horizon, in terms of the stocks and cryptocurrencies that she has picked, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, that they will be successful in the long term. However, she did claim that she was wrong on the prolonged inflation that we have seen and also the supply chain issues that we have seen along with the invasion of Russia and Ukraine, which was obviously not foreseen for her. So there were a few things that she was wrong on, and she did admit that. However, it is now clear that we are in a recession. So let's quickly move on to what you should be doing right now in a recession to not lose money. So one of the first cryptocurrencies that I highly recommend you do your research on is Cardano. If we look at the graph of Cardano over the past year, we can see that it did reach a high at around $3 last September. And since then, it has been trading down, and we have seen record low prices at below 50 cents. If you are invested in the future of cryptocurrency, Cardano is your number one pick. There's a lot of room for growth for Cardano, and it has been holding strong since we have entered a recession. Confirmations of a recession happened around in April, and since then Cardano was already trailing down and trading below a dollar. And since then it has only dropped around 50%. I think that this is a huge buying opportunity for Cardano. Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, has been very transparent with this project and they have been doing a lot to upgrade the ecosystem of Cardano and they have a well-rounded community that will continue to support this project. Cardano is here to stay. Now another project you should do your research in is Solana. We can see that for the past week it is already up 20.75% and today it is up 6%, showing an even higher increase than Cardano. We can see that in November, it did reach a high of $258, and since then, it has been trailing down. Since recession fears began to kick in, it was trading at around $110, and since then, it has been cut nearly 66%. However, compared to other cryptocurrencies, it is showing relative strong support at this level. It did drop below $30 at the $28 level, and since then, it has been recovering quite strongly. It has been on an upward trajectory for the past week, and I do believe that it will continue to go higher in the weeks to come. If we do look at the overall market for the past day, we can actually see that it's gone up 5%. And this is very good news, because this might be the end of the cryptocurrency downfall. We can already see that Bitcoin is up to $21,000 after trading below the $20,000 level 
for the past two weeks. Now, if you want a safer investment that's less riskier and has a higher market cap than both Solana and Cardano, another cryptocurrency pick would of course be Ethereum. Ethereum is already up 6% for the past day and is up 20% for the past week. Ethereum has been trading very rocky since reaching a high of nearly $5,000 last November. It has been on a downward trajectory after seeing a possible recovery towards the upside in February at $3,200 and even higher in April at $3,500. But since then, once recession fears did kick in, once the report of inflation did kick in and the feds began to raise interest rates, Ethereum has been on a severe, severe downward trajectory. Now, based on how quickly Ethereum dropped, I think that there is much room for upward growth. I think based off how quickly it dropped, it can go up just as quickly as it did drop. I think anybody that bought Ethereum below $1,000 made a very smart investment move. I think a lot more people will begin to invest in Ethereum simply because it is oversold. And if we do look at the past week, we can see that a lot of whales did eat this dip at the $1,000 level. And since then, it has been on an upward trajectory. So Ethereum is a no-brainer if you want a smart, risk-free asset. However, there will always be some type of risk when investing in cryptocurrency but this is a safe bet. Now this next project that we're going to look at is a very small scale project and relative to its market cap, which as of right now is at 4 billion 470 million. The name of this project is Polygonmatic. We can see that for today it is up 7.81% and for the past week it is up 24.33%. It has a very high trading volume of 600 million, which is always a good thing. It shows that there's high liquidity and a lot of people investing in this project. Now, if you don't know about what Polygonmatic is about, it's actually an Ethereum scaling solution. One of the main drawbacks about Ethereum is its very high gas fees. So Polygonmatic proposes to have a solution in regards to Ethereum's problems. They are also highly invested in the crypto gaming space. We can see that Polygonmatic did reach a high of around $3 last December, and since then it dropped and was trading at around the $1.5 level and since then, once inflation fears and recession kicked in, it began to drop more and has dropped nearly 66% since last April. So if you ever do plan on investing in the cryptocurrency market, what I highly recommend is dollar cost averaging your way. Maybe invest about 5% each week of your dedicated investing money towards the market because we will not see prices like this for much longer. Now, Polygonmatic is holding very strong at this support level. We did see it drop down to 0.34 and since then it had a sharp recovery all the way back to 50 cents and 60 cents and we can see for the past week it's been nothing but an upward trajectory so if you guys do want to invest in a small scale project with potential 10x returns 20x returns in the future we're talking long scale here so within the next five years if you do want to get 20x's polygonmatic is definitely one of those picks and for our next pick it's actually a gaming token it's called the Sandbox. We can see that the Sandbox is up 25% within the past week alone. And within the past 24 hours, it has been on a relative downtrend. However, don't be fooled. This token has much room for growth and could be the future of gaming cryptocurrency. Its competitor is Decentraland. However, I do think that the Sandbox has a very strong community and can potentially outperform Decentraland in the future, if not already. We can see that last November, it did reach a high of around eight dollars and fifty cents and since then it has fell and last april it was trading at around three dollars and fifty cents and once recession fears did kick in that's when it dropped a lot so we can see another 66 percent fall from last april which is when recession fears did kick in however it has been trading towards the upside within the past month so we can see after dropping to 74 cents, it had a very sharp rebound and a lot of people began to invest into this token. That shows me that there's a very strong support level at the 75 cent level. And I don't think it's gonna go there again. I think it is possible that we have seen the worst of the cryptocurrency fall. Things are beginning to level out and there's not as much fear in the market as we have seen within the past month. And this very sharp increase shows me that there is a strong community behind the sandbox and there's a lot of room for growth. Now, what exactly is a sandbox and why should you invest into this token? So the sandbox is a blockchain based virtual world allowing users to create, build, buy and sell digital assets in the form of a game. 
by combining the powers of decentralized autonomous organizations and non-fungible tokens. So DAOs and NFTs, the sandbox creates a decentralized platform for the thriving gaming community. Now the gaming community in the cryptocurrency space is very early on. That's why I highly recommend if you do have some spare investing money that you do your research on gaming tokens because this is a fast growing space that has a lot of room for growth. And if you do want to get into the gaming community as of now, this is a great time to invest. So that wraps it up for the top five cryptocurrency picks. And since we are in a recession, it's very good to be smart about your money. Invest when prices are low because that's the best buying opportunity that you will have. If you enjoyed this video, slap a like on this video and make sure to subscribe to my channel. I do give out weekly cryptocurrency updates. So feel free to comment down below on which cryptocurrency you are interested in buying. And let's just have a well-rounded discussion as a community in terms of what to do in this ongoing recession. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week or probably earlier.